ooh, 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 ooh. Check this out. Welcome back to the mailbag here on the Dean Show. I'm Yusuf Estes, and want to jump right into this one. This is an interesting one, and a common one as well. When a person reaches the <laughs> reaches the point where they say, "Well, the evidence is overwhelming, and it seems to me that Islam is the truth," I can't really come up with anything else. It looks like it's the only way to really understand the concept of God and the proper way to reach Him or worship Him. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? Otherwise, you wouldn't write the letter. You'd just go ahead and enter a slam. But, he said, I have a habit of, over my life of chasing women, drinking alcohol, and various and other sundry things that he details here we don't need to go into. But in any case, he said, what if I went to Islam, which seems right to me, but at the same time, what if I can't hang on? What if I fail? What if I fall out of Islam? What if I go back to the evil that I used to do? What if I can't do all the praying and the fasting and the things that Islam calls for? I don't, maybe I don't want to grow my beard or in, in the case of one of the sisters, a uh, lady, she asked that, what if I can't wear that cover on my head, things like this? And then they would consider me an apostate and then would they kill me? And I'm going to tell you, I don't mean to laugh because I know that it's a serious question, but the reason I'm chuckling is because I went through the same thing myself. When I came into Islam, I said, wait a minute, guys, I don't know this. You guys are praying five times every day. What if I forgot to pray? You know what would happen then? Or, and you're talking about fasting. You're talking about not eating, not drinking, not enjoying some of the things I take for granted every day. You want me to give that up for a whole month out of every year? Uh... It's not that I don't really want to, it's that what if I can't or what if I forget? You know, it, it might be too much for me. And so, and I also had heard that if you left Islam, they'd chop your head off. <laughs> <laughs> it was not funny. It was not funny when I uh, heard it then, but it's funny now because I know good and well it's not true. But, you know, at the time, you know, I was hearing all these things. There were people all around me trying to tell me, oh, stay away from the Muslims. You're going to get a demon. Stay away from these Muslims because they're going to mess you up. They're going to do stuff to you and blah, blah, blah. Terrorism, acts of, you know, suicide bombers, all the rest of it. Let me just put it real simple for you. It's very simple. If you really believe there's one God and he has no partners and you're willing to worship him on his terms and you're really taking even the first step, then you have already entered upon the brink of Islam itself. Whether you know anything about the Arabia, the Arabic language, or the Quran, or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whether or not you have any knowledge of all of the subjects that people talk about, or even establish the first prayer, or even fast the first day of Ramadan. The fact that you believe and you're trying your best indicates immediately you're progressing toward true Islam. You want to continue in that way as much as you can at your own pace, going step by step. Don't worry about the other people around you. This is not a race between you and the people. This is something where you are making your own contact, your own hookup, connection with the Lord above. Let him guide you, and then you move forward at a pace that you can handle. And if you do fall back, if you do slip, know that he forgives. He says that he can forgive anything, anything at all, except that you worship other than him that you establish some kind of partners with him that is not there. So keep that in mind, and then do this. Go in your heart and pray and say, Oh Lord, I know that you exist, and I know you created me, and I want you to give me the best for me. Guide me. Guide me to the truth. And if there is a God, then for sure he'll know and he'll take care of you. It's up to him. He's the only one that guides. He says in the Quran, you don't guide those whom you love, but it's the Lord above who guides to this straight path, whoever he wills. With that, we'll turn you back over to the Dean Show. And until next time, peace. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah.